a um, tag next to it with the price. Um, if you are interested in purchasing any of it, I have some um, stickers here that you can you know, claim your artwork with. So just come find me if that is of interest to you. And uh, they also have some, Galena and Sylvia has, they have some prints on display here as well for purchase. Um, let's see, I know there was one more thing about the artwork. Scavenger hunt? <laughs> do the drum, do the drum. Okay, let's get started with our, let's get started with our, um, our panel. Okay, let me get this mic. is introduce yourself um, feel free to point out your artworks in the space and describe how either one or collectively your paintings pertain to the theme triumph yeah uh, yes. <laughs> I just need to talk right into it I keep forgetting about it so hi everyone uh, my name is Galina Marcus and uh, four of my work are on the back wall in back of blood frames uh, all of them are portraits of tribal women. Uh, you can see that they are all uh, represent different cultures. And uh, the inspiration for that work uh, came from the idea that women carry the cultures, carry the... Uh, we, we are the carriers of whatever culture we represent. We are the mothers, we are queens, we are... Uh, I'm, I'm losing my English today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can see uh, all four of them represent different. Uh, so the, one is the goddess, the one is the queen, uh, one is the uh, shaman, uh, and the other one is Christus. that are primarily dances. Um, dancing is one of those forms of art and expression. They're even at two years old. Two years old are hearing music and they're out there like shaking their booty. And so it relates to triumph in this way of the kinds of poses that happen in dancing or that get expressed in dancing. Uh, it's the pinnacle, it's the place where we arrive. It's, it's that moment of expression that just makes dance beautiful. Good evening, my name is Sylvia Becker-Hill and I'm originally from Germany, just in case you're wondering where the accent is from. To be here tonight for me is a very magical synchronicity because my paintings you see tonight six, the big one here, the Shinkura, one there, there, and uh, the one who looks like as if I stepped out of it uh, in the foyer. I was uh, working on those in the last two years, not knowing that there will be at Hera Hub an exhibition with the theme Triumph, but all my paintings deal with that theme. So my, uh, the lineage I'm coming from is called Intentional Creativity, and it's never about the result. It's not about the painting. You don't need any talent. Because in that tradition, we are not looking into the world and try to capture what we see outside. We are looking inward, and we are painting soulscapes. So each painting you see from me is uh, quite personal, because I worked in every painting through some old trauma, old tribulations, old trials, and turned them, hello, da, all into triumphs. So it's, um, I call my books, uh, my paintings, books on canvas, because they are so full of stories and symbolism that you can literally read them. And I'm in the process of uh, trademarking that term, books on canvases. So thank you, and approach us all three for all the stories behind our paintings. Thank you. Your personal background influenced your artwork? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'll be honest, I did not prepare anything, uh, no answer, because I have a five months old who's actually walking around all there. Oh, um, God. So, yeah, my background, uh, I am originally from Russia, uh, and I have been creative all my life, and uh, just like Sylvia, uh, the something that I want to express is always visual, I'm a very, very visual person. And this is why my work is never the same. I, have very, I, I used to joke that my, my biggest series was three and a half paintings. Now, like, my biggest series is four. <laughs> uh, but they never are the same. And if, if, if you take a look at the prints that I have, I have uh, prints from uh, the most recent uh, series about the orange walls and the graffitis on the walls. It's a totally different technique. And it's because, uh, yeah, just like Sylvia was expressing, explaining that you're writing a story. To me, different techniques is something that like I am experiencing in the moment, so I cannot really do the same thing over and over and over again. So my work is very different, and uh, I used to be very self-conscious about that, but I'm, I'm just—I guess I'm okay with it now. <laughs> Okay, my background is uh, when I was younger, my father said, no, you can't be an artist. You have to do something that makes money. <laughs> so I went to school and I became an art therapist. So I'm a trained art therapist and I have a private practice in Rancho Granado. And the way it's formed my artwork is um, an expression of sort of that transcendence when I see trauma, when I come from a family background of trauma, that um, there's a place inside that we find that builds strength within us, and that's what gets expressed in our family. There's definitely a theme here among the three of us. Very, very clear. And your team, the curators from Hera, can we give them an applause because they do it without knowing all that. Intuitively, the right three artists women coming together. Thank you. I'm originally from Germany and I was born as a single child into a family of my parents and my mother's parents who were four adults deeply, deeply traumatized by the Second World War which obviously as a child you don't know, you don't understand, but it has an imprint on the, on you. I could talk like for 10 days just about that. But that's the background. I didn't know that I was carrying epigenetically literally the traumas of four adults with me in my body, in my bones throughout my life. The world saw always a super successful businesswoman. I celebrated in September 25 years being self-employed as a corporate executive coach, leadership trainer, change management agent. I have uh, a publishing house, I have multiple businesses. So the world always thought, she has figured it out, she has it all. And superficially I had, but inside of me there were lots of, um, to summarize it, dark worlds and, and struggles and self-sabotage. And I didn't understand where that was coming from before I understood the whole concept of epigenetic PTSD and the roots with my parents. And the art you see now is literally, I'm very proud, after 35 years not painting, and because I was a people pleaser, I didn't become an artist to please my parents, the lockdown during the pandemic was a gift for me. I painted this painting, this is the title, this is me, this is who I am, five months lockdown. It has over 50 layers. I have three variable art fashion lines from underpaintings of that same painting because I literally worked through most of my childhood stories and traumas in one painting. And that's the power of art. Art transforms because colors and shapes and forms are the language of the soul. And the mind, the conscious mind and the ego can never get to those pockets in our soul where art goes straight away because the painting takes more than a thousand words. Alright, my final questions are a little more specific to each artist. 
So, Galena, I know you do a lot in art besides painting. Can you tell us a little bit more about your art-related endeavors? Oh, yeah. Uh, my uh, favorite endeavor, which actually, actually was a product of the lockdown as well. So, uh, 2020 was a blues because I built a studio in a garage and I was like, oh my god, uh, no one's bothering me, I gotta paint, I, I, I want to do whatever. By the beginning of 2021, I was so sick of being alone, I, I was craving the community. So I started a, a art club. And uh, yeah, I have, uh, I have arts here as well. It's called In the Art Scene. I interview artists from all over the world. Uh, I am recording season six already. Uh, it's released weekly. In that, it has been the, uh, the best healing tool that I had for myself because I gained so many friends and I literally gained an art community for myself. Uh, anywhere from from the United States to Australia. I'm not kidding. Uh, so that's yeah, uh, um, and it's a constant source of inspiration because all of them are different, all of them are coming from uh, different mediums, they have photographers and filmmakers and painters obviously, and, and uh, it's just keeps reminding me that the world of creativity is unlimited. There is literally no limit to what we can create. So it constantly inspires me and, and it constantly keeps reminding me that artists are not competitors, artists are supportive of each other and love each other and uh, sometimes we are intimidated by each other but <laughs> the moment you start talking to the artist you, you gain a friend for life. What's next for you? I know you've done a lot of experimentation with different techniques, so what's next for you with your art? Uh, what's next is, I have been experimenting, and what I've been looking more towards is um, some abstract expression. And um, there's, a, there's a artist in Britain who just inspired me. It, she, she does... Um, abstracts that take in the old master's paintings and then she just moves with paint and motion. And um, so I've been very inspired to pursue some of that work in my experimentation. But also, I, I find that no matter what I do, I wind up fascinated with people. So <laughs> generally it can be abstract, but there's going to be a person in there somewhere. So, I'm a coach, an executive coach for over 25 years, and a very good one. And yet, sometimes, after five, six, seven months after the coaching has ended, and I reach out to clients to just check in, how are you doing? Sometimes when the environment is still the old environment, and is not changing as well, the environment can literally transform you back into your old self before the coaching. I see a few people nodding here, you know what I'm talking about. And the other problem is that when we are under stress and we are tired, even though we grew enormously, we made lots of changes, suddenly the self-doubt kicked in. Did I really change? Can I really do this? And that frustrated me for literally over 20 years. And I was looking for something. How can I help my clients? to make it more sustainable and really hardwired in their brain so that they stop the self-doubt and have something like a protective shield against the onslaught of their environment which tries to pull them back into their old comfort zone. Hello, Da, now I have it. I paint at the end of coaching processes a painting for that client where the before and after of the transformation is captured in that painting. And I do that in co-creation with that client. So at the end or the beginning and end of each coaching session, I ask now when they talk about their problem. What is the shape? What is the color? 
what is the emotion, the frequency of that problem, and then at the end of the session, what's the shape, what's the color, da da da. And I collect that literally in an Excel sheet because I use both brain hemispheres. And when the coaching process is over, I take this Excel sheet with all sessions and all the information of the soul language of the client, and I go to the painting, to the canvas. It takes me a few weeks. It's, it's quite an um, intense process, so I can't do this for all clients. I always take only two clients on to do that. But the magic is when a client has now a painting, imagine that size painting, of your transformation hanging in your office or living room, it's a daily reminder. It's tangible, you see it, you can feel it. You, and when I say feeling, not only from touching, but the energy, the frequency. Every painting sends out a message through frequency. So self-doubt, self gone. It's, it's just the painting anchors the transformation in a sustainable way, which normal classic coaching using language without the visual simply never could. So finally, I feel like I found the magic ones I always was looking for for over 20 years. Okay, I remember what I was gonna say earlier, and that was a reminder about our scavenger hunt. Um, so there is an art scavenger hunt. The cards are over there by the whiteboard if you haven't grabbed one already. Um, it basically requires you to check out the paintings and find some little details in the paintings. Um, and once you complete it, go ahead and pop it in there. We will be um, basically whoever, we'll, we'll pull some, some winners out and there are some gorgeous prints from our artists that will be um, awarded as prizes. So we'll do that along with the, uh, the Chambers raffle 